Hello Summoners and welcome back to another Pro Guides video. My name is Nathan Ng and today we'll be talking about our predictions for the 15 most broken champions on patch 12.14. One of the most important things in a constantly evolving game like League of Legends is to be able to adapt with the meta, and that's why we're here for you. If you want to know what's going to be OP before the patch even hits, you'll be ready to hit the ground running without even having to test if one buff or nerf really made that much of a difference. And if you don't really know how to play any of these OP picks or you're just a little bit rusty, this will give you a few days to brush up on them and some normals or on a smurf. Before we get started, I just want to say that this list is not in any particular order. It's just a list of champions that we predict will be some of the strongest, most influential picks on this patch. We'll start off the list with Fiddlesticks. His buffs last patch really pushed him over the top. Honestly, I'm kind of shocked that he wasn't hit with an immediate hotfix. Across the board, in all ranks, he's just an absolutely dominant pick. I'd say that he's hands down the most broken pick in the jungle at the moment, and as we've covered in our previous videos, he's even a pretty broken support. If scaling picks are your thing, you absolutely need to be abusing him. There's no real counter pick that can actually shut him down. The only option is trying to close out the game before he even gets a chance to scale. But we all know how that goes in solo queue. Even games with the biggest leads can be tough to close out when your team is getting picked one after another. Whether you're trying to learn to abuse the broken champions on this list, or how to deal with them when you end up on the wrong side of the matchup, if you really want to speed up that process, you should check out ProGuides.com. We have courses from all your favorite streamers and pros, like CoreJJ, Aphromoo, and X Smithy to really help you understand how to play your role. And if you want a more personalized experience, we have coaches available 24-7, ready to help you guys become the best. Our coaches are top tier players that have spent years climbing the solo queue ladder, and they're ready to share everything that they learned with you. So, let's get back on topic, shall we? With how broken Wukong has been since his mini revamp several patches ago, you'd think he'd be on the chopping block a few times in a row. Instead, Riot gave him a little slap on the wrist nerf last patch that changed absolutely nothing. And now this time around, they're giving him an adjustment to his HP regeneration. What's actually crazy is that they actually originally planned to buff his ultimate to compensate for that nerf to his passive. Thankfully, they decided that giving a pretty big buff to a champion that's dominated three different roles for months now probably isn't a great idea. Seraphine is getting nerfed this patch, but don't be fooled. She's still going to be an insanely busted pick that can continuously milk free elo. According to Riot's notes, Seraphine as a bot lane carry is what specifically is being nerfed this patch, but let's actually stop and think about it for a minute. The W shield and heal AP ratios are being nerfed. Additionally, we're seeing nerfs to the healing and shielding power on Forbidden Idol and the items that it builds into. These changes are going to hurt support Seraphine a lot more than Seraphine as a bot lane carry. The typical bot lane build most people go with is focused on getting as much ability haste as possible to cycle through spells and get off those Echo W casts repeatedly in fights. But you can easily swap up Seraphine's items a bit and go with an older style build that goes for Sorcerer's Shoes and Ludens to do a ton of damage while also bringing in a ton of utility to the table. Or if you're just trying to coast by and get the extra support to the team, the same old ability haste stacking build will still be super strong and easy to play. Again, this is another case where Bright is just being way too shy with the nerfs for a champ that needs to be badly gutted, or at least heavily revamped. Another bot laner that is going to remain a very safe way to inflate your elo is Sivir. Before 12.13 went live, we weren't too sure how her mid-scope update would affect her, but it definitely wasn't long before we realized just how broken she was. Riot quickly hotfixed her, but it was a pretty mild one, and she still easily outclasses every other marksman in the bot lane. What's crazy to me is that the 12.14 notes say that they're nerfing Sivir, but if you read the changes, they're actually going to be making her a little bit stronger. Yeah, her wave clear is taking a bit of a hit, but her wave clear was super overkill. You'll so mow down minions after that nerf. But the bug fix to her Q is a huge buff, almost cutting the cast time in half once you have enough attack speed. Tarek may just be the best support in the game on this patch. He was already competing with that title previously, and with other top tier supports and their items being nerfed this time around, there may not be much more competition left. He's got a bit of a learning curve, but trust me, he has a surprisingly flexible kit, able to go offensive or defensive in lane and in team fights, and has a ton of playmaking potential. Another support benefiting from the nerfs aimed at enchanters and Renata this patch is Zillion. In a lot of ways, Zillion functions like an enchanter. He's pretty weak early, but scales immensely well when he's able to enable his allies so well in fights later on. And when the enchanter's having less of a late game guarantee since their items are being nerfed, Zillion may be a better pick than any one of them. Up next, we have Rek'Sai. Rek'Sai tends to do better the higher you go in elo, because you have to be really good at maintaining high tempo with her. Higher ranked players have a lot more macro than lower ones, so they're able to path more efficiently and really turn an engine to a mile once they get the lead early on. If you want to learn how to generate those leads consistently and use them to actually close out the games fast, you know our coaches are ready to show you the way anytime. 
Trunnel continues to be one of our top picks, with him being an impressive pick in both the top and jungle. Despite him being so strong, he's been super underpicked, so you'll rarely find him being contested in solo queue. Most people would rather play a flashier, more showy carried champion in the jungle, but sometimes simple is best. I take the consistently high impact that Trundle brings over the gaudy but awful performance that you can get with Lee any day. When right above Timerdinger back on 12.12, they went a bit overboard, with his win rate being above a 54% in most elos. He's been super lane dominant, but unlike most lane bullies, he doesn't fall off in the slightest. In fact, he scales better than any other champion in the game. His DPS is super high, with his ult and power turret basically being a hyper carry by itself. Just a single laser from it can be enough to shave off half a squishy champion's health bar. He's also a monster at shredding objectives, easily being able to spawn kill Baron for a cheesy way to put your team ahead in the mid game. Vex's 12.13 buffs her Q was seemingly small, but it had quite an effect, causing her win rate to jump up an entire 4%. At first, that seems pretty crazy when you just think about it being a 1 second and a 10% AP ratio increase on a single spell, but Vex's Q is her bread and butter. It's her poke, wave clear, and most of her damage in team fights. Now, she's one of the safest, most consistent carries in the game, with strong laning and super high carry potential in the mid game. While Vex is in a really good spot right now, with a win rate around 53%, she also doesn't feel awful to play against. That's because Riot actually did a pretty good job balancing her. She has to be able to land her ultimate to be able to chain more opponents. And that brings us to today's question of the day. What are some other champions with well-balanced kits? This isn't necessarily a matter of how strong they are in the current meta, but just more of a general thing. Let us know your answers and the explanations down in the comments below. Now without further ado, let's get back on topic. A champion that I think should be abused way more often is Zac. And it's not just having his native role as a jungler where he can hard carry games. He's a monster in both solo lanes and is one of the only tanky engaged champions that can actually consistently do well as a support. Honestly, I bet you can even make an argument for Zac with Fasting Senna, making him one of the only champions in League's history that could be considered top tier in all 5 roles at the same time. Next up, we have Twitch. He isn't quite as consistent as Sivir, since he doesn't really have a super safe lane neutralizing power that she does, but trading off some safety comes with the benefit of having a lot more agency as a carry. Twitch's ability to roam and assess any targets gives you a chance to take the game into your own hands a lot earlier than most ADCs, who generally just clear waves and wait for team fights. Personally, I like the slightly higher risk, high reward playstyle myself. For some reason, a lot of hype surrounding Swain after his mid-scope update has fallen off, and I don't really know why. The nerfs that he received hasn't really put up a dent in how much of a monster he is once you get past two items. He's a true drain tank, dishing out insane amounts of healing and damage through whatever your foes throw at you. The only real weakness that you have is that Swain is pretty useless when his ult is on cooldown, but with the CD being low after this update, that window is pretty easy to play around. Just make sure you don't choose him into Silas, because Silas with Swain's ultimate is an absolute nightmare. Another mid laner that you should be abusing this patch is Victor. While he hasn't really had any direct balance changes aimed at him since last season, the meta has shifted to a spot where it really favors him. There are little to no real counters in the mid lane, making it really easy to safely free farm in most games. And when you're able to freely farm up on one of the hardest skilling champions and carries in the game, you're going to be pretty impactful once the mid game comes around. Finishing off our list, we have Amumu. It can be pretty easy to overlook Amumu, when there are other champions like Fiddle6 in the top spot. He's a tank, so he surely can't be as OP as a hard scaling carry like Fiddle, right? Well, I would say it'd be a mistake to make an assumption like that. Amumu may be a tank, but he does a ridiculous amount of damage for being so unkillable himself. Also, his CC doesn't really have any condition attached to it. It doesn't matter if you're in vision or not, if you're able to land your spells, you're guaranteed to lock down the enemy team. This makes him easier to execute than Fiddlesticks. And that about wraps things up for our predictions for the 15 most broken champions on patch 12.14. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I hope you guys enjoyed the video. And if you did, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss on content like this. And remember, let us know what champions you think have the most balanced kits down in the comments below. Oh, and one last thing, don't forget to check out our Discord in the description box below, where you can discuss it further, or just hang out and be part of the community. I can't wait to see you guys back in the next video, but until then, stay safe, stay healthy, and have a wonderful day. Peace.